Jacoby lost his first tooth today. Mm-hmm. It was pretty loose uh, yesterday and this morning. It was like basically like he was pulling it all the way forward. I was hoping he'd lose it at home, but he lost it at school. But he was pretty proud of himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Tooth Fairy already picked it up. Mm-hmm. I was hoping he wouldn't put it under his pillow just to make it easier on the Tooth Fairy, but no, of course not. Can't have that. Yeah, I did. What do you? Was was the Tooth Fairy leave now? Uh, five bucks. Wow. Yeah. We were just gonna do a dollar, but my nephew uh, got five bucks, and so I was like, if we don't, like, that's gonna be a whole ordeal. Which tooth was it? Front one, like this one, I think, or this one. Oh, okay. Okay. Not his chipped one. His top top one he chipped when he was little. But yeah, I, uh, my youngest got their uh, braces off this week. You have to go to like retainer and all that stuff now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Apparently, the retainer is for life. Yeah, I didn't realize that either. And yeah. if you don't keep using it, like Tiffany stopped using hers and she had to get like the mm. um, a Visalign or whatever to get them kind of back in line. Oh, wow. Which I looked at my teeth and they're all like crooked and stuff, which. Is bad for him because it does make where like there's more crevices and stuff, so it's harder to clean. Yeah, man, my teeth are one of those things I just like hate looking at. Like they're not bad, but like you see somebody with like I'm, super I white hate teeth. Going, I go, I because you go to the dentist and then they're like, "Here's everything you're doing wrong." Mm. And if you pay us eighty gajillion dollars, then we can fix it. Other or you can be a piece of shit and have a stupid ass mouth. Yeah. You're going to have a gross mouth. When people are close up, they're going to see your gingivitis. It's like, you can't see that. Like, pff, that's what you think. Yeah. Says you. Do, do you your gums degree? bleed every time? Do your gums bleed every time you floss? Yeah. Doesn't it for everybody? Pff, I guess not mine. See how white these teeth <laughs> are. I have super, cause I have normal teeth. Yeah. I not floss like seven you. times a day. How many times have you flossed? Seven times <laughs> in my lifetime. <laughs> All right, Are you recording? <sighs> yes. All right, so I wasn't sure about talking about this specific topic because we talked offline a little bit about it, and you said this is something that's been coming up. This is kind of like we're out of scary. We month. texted each other about it, and you were like, "Yeah, have you watched the? Have you done this thing? And have you watched the show?" And I said, "No," and I also said that it's not really my. Cup of cup of Jamba Juice. Yeah, and so I, I was a little interested still to see what this was about because it's the, was like the number one show on Netflix. Um, uh-huh. I was <clears throat> raised on a lot of these documentaries when I was like probably too young to watch them, like ten or eleven. So I jumped into it. I'm only about four episodes in or five episodes in. So I want to talk about is it this the is it the Netflix ten? I think it's ten. Yeah, it's ten episodes. Um, and I haven't watched the tapes yet. So there's apparently two, there's a documentary and there's the show. So, Oh man. Yeah. It seems like a lot. Yeah. But let's jump into this. This is, this is going to be not a lot of laughs. I don't think it's going to be more serious. talk. (laughs) Challenge accepted. Although bro, Halloween, we did make cannibalism fun, but I don't know if we can make this subject fun. I mean, how can you not? That's a good point. We should have probably done this in October. Yeah, well, I wasn't really thinking about doing it at all, but like I've been thinking about it a lot, which, again, bro, Halloween, we talked about all the bodies in my forest, so <laughs> this might this might out me a little bit more than I want. Let's just keep let's just keep the spooky going. Yeah, into November. That's right. On our, on the road to become a true crime podcast. All right, let's take some Polaroids. Let's get freaky. Oh God! Get a little now you're comfortable. Making, see, now you made it weird. Yeah. All right, here we go. <gasps> What's up, everybody? I'm Richard, and I'm Sean, and we're speaking the language of bromance. And today, Sean is going to tell me about something. You know what? This is actually not this is not the first time that you have come to me and you're like, hey, I've watched this thing. Have you watched this thing? And I say no. And I have no desire to. And then you're like, well, I'm going to tell you all about it. And I'm like, 
okay. And then you say, I'm going to tell you all about it and it's going to make you want to watch it. And I'm like, I don't know about that. You did it to me with Tiger King. And to this day, I have not seen Tiger King. Yeah, I... If if you were like Sean, I want to watch one of these. So the thing I want to talk about today is I'm sure everybody's you gave talking me about two it. episodes on Tiger Cake. You're like, we're gonna t- I'm gonna give you this yeah. whole story. Yeah, it was well, I mean, Tiger King was a time and place. Like, it was like early 2020. Everybody's getting locked down, yep. and it's like yep. we got to watch. And so like if you watched it now, yeah, totally wouldn't work. But if you watched it at that time. Like it, it if you watched work. it when you had no other option, and yeah. you were stuck in your house. Because the base was like, well, my wife, my life could be worse. It's the equivalent. It's the equivalent of gun to your head. You have to watch this show. <laughs> and you're like, all right. But no. So the the number one show, uh, I think it's probably been about a month ago now. At this point, is the new. Man, it even just sounds creepy. Like I, I had like I seriously didn't know if I want to talk about this or not, but. Like I've been like processing this through my head for a while after watching the first four episodes because it's the Netflix show Monster. Uh, I think it's, is it the Jeffrey Dahmer story or Jeffrey Dahmer something? I don't know. You tell me. You're the one that watched it. Yeah, the Jeffrey Dahmer. Story. Okay, so I feel like I feel like I should I should preface by saying that the reason that I am not particularly like running towards watching this because like as uh, I, I I I told you before you're not the first person I've had multiple people that asked me if I've watched this and I have not and I really don't have any desire to for a few reasons one is especially in the case of Jeffrey Dahmer um so I did a like a big extensive research paper when I was in college a big research paper on serial killers and the insanity defense. And so do while doing research for that paper, I watched like three, three hours, three hours of just interviews with him. Yeah. And he did on a top lot. of, on top of, uh, you know, like a, you know, a bunch of different, uh, you know, documentary programs and stuff like that on all sorts of different killers, but Dahmer was a big one. Um, Any specific reason why Dahmer? um, I think it's be, well, because the, so the thesis was um, that even though you're crazy, you're, you might, even though you're crazy, you're not necessarily it. Crazy doesn't mean insane. To, I mean, to, to kind of nutshell it, crazy doesn't mean insane. And so I like Dahmer was a was a pretty big instance of because if, you know, because like he killed an eight people. So you would think so. So, you know, he killed an eight people. Right. So why did he go to prison? Why wasn't he put in an institution? Because in. Because to most people, if you say, hey, do you think a, a person that kills and eats people is crazy? Everybody would say, yes, of course, that's yeah, crazy. That's not a normal beh- You're not behavior. supposed to kill and eat people. That's not normal. That's crazy. So why would he go? Why wouldn't he? Why was he in prison? Because even though he was crazy, he wasn't insane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh- because when you listen to a lot of the interviews, he very much understood what he did was wrong. Exactly. He understood what he did was wrong. He understood that what he, that he was doing a bad thing and not just that, but he was also, he also took steps to ensure that he did not get caught so he could continue to do the bad thing. That is what makes him not, insane and in a way that's almost in a way like doesn't that feel worse like if you're compelled and compulsed to do a thing regardless of the consequences that's crazy and bad yeah and but if you are if you if you have the mental 
uh, awareness to understand what you're doing is bad and are taking active steps to obfuscate in order to keep doing it. Like that's worse. It might for me, like that's worse. Yeah, and I think it can get a little bit like a technicality because I'm sure some people may try to see the best way to think about this. Because like, like whenever you see Dahmer talking in those interviews, like he, like something seems off. Well, yeah, because I mean, because again, he killed an eight people. It's he's crazy. Like he is crazy, and and uh, like nobody's disputing that. But he's not insane. But and even in that, like it's almost better that that came out that way because if they charged him as being insane, he could have gone to an insane asylum. And at what point could they have been like, "Oh, you're good now. Why don't you leave?" Exactly. Well, and and and, and that's part of it too. Is you know, if you're institutionalized, then you know, obviously. Security to a point is a little, a little more, obviously an institution isn't as secure as, you know, a federal prison. Number one, number two, uh, if, if, if you're institutionalized, there's a possibility, there's probably a greater chance of you not be, you know, I'm sure some people are, you know, get put in an institution and they're there forever. But I think you probably you might have a better chance of being released from an institution, you know, being crazy than from a federal prison. Yeah. And what's interesting, so um, apparently that was a pretty big, like, topic. Uh, and I don't know if this shows, like, I feel like if you look back at it now, like, there's not a lot of, maybe it's just me, but I don't feel like there's a lot of, like, ha-has when you think about Jeffrey Dahmer. But... Uh, because I've been like, you know, I looked up the trailer for this when it came out and then it like YouTube's mm-hmm. like, Hey, you should see this interview that Jeffrey Dahmer did. Oh, here's this other thing about Jeffrey Dahmer. You should watch. There was an SNL clip from 1992 as his trial was going on, joking all about like this case. And it was Chevy Chase playing Jeffrey Dahmer. And the whole <laughs> thing was, he was trying to basically be like, he was like, not acting insane, but he was Jeffrey Dahmer talking to his lawyers saying, like, listen, I got an idea, guys. Or no, the lawyers come and say, hey, what we're going to do, we're going to, you know, plead insanity. You know, you'll go to an a institution for a couple years and then, you know, hopefully get you cleaned up and then they'll let you out. Mm-hmm. And he kind of started going on, like, oh, that's a great idea, guys. So what I'll do is I'll walk in, I'll start talking to myself. And they're like... No, I think the whole murdering and eating people would be good enough <laughs> for the insanity plea. He's like, no, 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 no. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was like, as this trial is going on, this very horrific thing happened, and SNL's making these jokes about it, which they kind of do today yeah. still, but it was just like, that felt very unsettling to me, seeing that from this perspective. Because again... uh. Uh, you know, I, I was big into horror movies and stuff, obviously, and uh, I didn't get into too much true crime stuff. And the one thing that turned me off of that, like a hundred percent, did you ever watch the movie Zodiac? Um, I think I did. When did that that came out a while ago? So I probably, I'm sure I saw it, but it was probably a, it was long ago, <clears throat> long ago enough that I don't remember. Yeah, I vividly remember because I went to it like, oh, my God, yeah, this is like real life. This is, you know, this should be interesting. And some of the murder scenes in that, like, when you see it and you're like, this actually happened. Like, Mm -hmm. legitimately Mm -hmm. happened. Maybe not exactly as they're showing it, but pretty darn close. Like, and there's not that many scenes like that in the Zodiac movie, but that pretty much was like, I, I don't really like this stuff. Like, it's too real for me. And uh, I remember um, uh, I got the Dahmer movie with Jeremy Reiner in it. Reimer? Reiner? Reimer? Hawkeye. Whatever his name is. Renner. Renner. Um, He was in a Dahmer movie in like 2002. And I remember getting that through Netflix and having it for a couple weeks and being like, yeah, I can't watch this. So. Okay. So, so that's, so that's one reason is because I, I kind of oversaturated myself with it. And so the whole, like, 
watching anything on on any of that, like I just I'm like I don't need it. Like I just don't need it. Okay, so that's 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 point number one. Point number two, and this is honestly, this is not only my beef with shows like this, which I guess I can't really speak to, you know, a bunch to this because I haven't watched it, but also <clears throat> to a lot of uh, shows and stuff like this. And even, and, and honestly, a lot of podcasts and stuff like this or that, that cover stuff like this is I feel that there is a glorization or almost fetish fetishization of the killers in shows like or, or, uh, on, on shows that are portraying information, you know, like giving stuff out about this, about these people. I feel like the, the killers are being in some ways humanized and like they, like, I don't need, I don't need you to humanize Jeffrey Dahmer. Like the guy was a fucking crazy monster. Yeah. And so that's one of the reasons I steered away from this a little bit as well originally and kind of like decided to take a look at it. Cause the thing that I think the show, it doesn't glorify him at all. I think a lot of the, like the, um, wickedly vile movie about Ted Bundy that came out a few years back, I get very much kind of like glorifying, fetishizing kind of, you know, that stuff from that movie. I haven't watched it, but that's kind of the feel I get. Mm -hmm. But with what, what this like show kind of did that I think was a good approach is it does focus a lot more on like the victims and the impact of people outside of not just the victims themselves, but the families and the people around it. So like in the very first, it's either the very first episode or the very first part of the second episode. And and they do a like, it's not like, you know, episode one is Jeffrey Dahmer, the younger years and work. It's all way up to when he gets caught in uh-huh. trial. It's very much like piecing these pieces together. So instead of seeing him kind of like gradually get to this point, the first episode is the guy who gets away. And so instantly you're kind of, you know, disjointed, but it's, I feel like that was a better approach than kind of doing like a very linear storytelling. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't, I don't need him. I don't need him to be, I don't need him to be a person. I'm fine with him being this personification of, uh, uh, of, I, I, I'm fine with him being a personification of evil. Yeah. And in that first episode, like, like, I I don't know, like, and and maybe this, I, I feel, you know, in a way this, I mean, I feel like this kind of speaks to, uh, I, I, it, it speaks to kind of society kind of at large, like, like let's just call a bad let's call a bad thing a, th- a bad thing and with television and and movies and podcasts and you know and all of it when it comes to this subject let's not let's let's just let's not let's not be like oh well they're people too I'm like no no they're they're not yeah and they're i not, don't- i mean they I mean, they're people in the biological sense. Yeah. And this show doesn't, I don't feel like it does that. Cause like I said, the first episode is him getting caught and right. Aw- and so instead of seeing like him in younger years and him kind of like, gra- like you're not like riding along with him and be like, oh, okay, I kind of see this. I kind of, you know, I can relate. I can relate. Oh God. Now he's murdering like 15 people in a week. Like, yeah. It's very much, and then, like, and then you, as the audience, are supposed to make this like leap of logic, like, oh, okay, well, you know, I guess, I guess, I guess, what he's doing is justified to a point. No, it's really not. It's yeah. not. And so the it's first episode, justified. them showing the guy who gets away, and really like putting all this out there is like, here's all the horrific things he's done. Like right away, you realize this guy is a monster. So anything that. Shows is this the guy stuff. that the guy that got away and the police brought him back? No, it's the the guy who actually got away and him getting arrested. Okay, okay. Um, and so and because Jeffrey Dahmer like like shared all this information. Like when he got arrested, he was just like, "Well, I'm caught. There's no reason for me to hide anything and not, you know, you found a blue barrel in my room with with three dead people in it. So I, there's no reason yeah. for me to lie. And uh, yeah, and I mean, do you think? Do you think? 
from from his perspective, do you think that by you know saying everything and te- you know and telling everything, like is it is it you know uh, I'm going to gain this notoriety and for and and furthering the the psychosis? No, nah, Ted Bundy, I feel like was kind of that like narcissist, but I don't I don't know. I don't know about Dahmer, like just the few interviews I've kind of watched with him since I've watched a little bit of the show. And it, it feels more like a guy who's like, you know, I didn't want or not that I didn't want to do this, but like I knew what I was doing was bad and now I'm caught. So, well, I mean, the, the like the interviews I've seen with him, like even even in the interviews, I mean, he doesn't he's not he's, he, he, he doesn't he's not carrying himself. He doesn't carry himself as someone that's ashamed. He carries himself as someone that has been caught. Uh, well, no, he's uh, so like when he got arrested, like I don't think he feels shame or remorse about the things that he's done. Um, I think that like he, he I, I've 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 never I haven't gotten that impression in some of the stuff. That I, I've seen I recently. think that he tries to convey shame and remorse, but what he's saying and his body language slash tone slash demeanor is juxta is, is, is not, is not in sync with the things that he's saying. Yeah. So I feel like he's, I, I feel like he's trying to convey, I feel like he's trying to be shameful and remorseful, but I don't think he actually is. Yeah. And all the stuff that I was watching, I didn't see anything where he's like, oh, I wish I didn't do it. Um, right. It was more in terms of like, I knew it was bad. And they asked like, well, do you still have those like, like feelings of doing that kind of stuff? He's like, yeah, like he doesn't yeah. hide from it. And like, he's, talked about like he didn't have a bad childhood or anything like that. So, um, yeah, it, I don't think he's proud. I don't think he's proud of the things that he's done, but I, but I really don't think that he feels ashamed of it either. Uh, no, I don't think he's ashamed. Um, but I don't think he's also trying to push like some kind of folklore about himself either. Um, and that, that's the one thing I was going to say with like, yeah, the, I this, agree. this show itself, the reason I kind of, have latched on a little bit to it is because it does ground. Cause I think like if you hear of Jeffrey Dahmer, it's like he killed 17 people. He ate them. Like it's almost got like a folklore kind of like a mythical thing to it. And when you see this more as a grounded, um, like he was just a horrible person. It takes away a lot of that, like folklore stuff. And like, I think it would take away from people being like, Oh, I should put a Jeffrey Dahmer lyric in my song because that would be, ke- be neat. Cause he ate people. Because mm-hmm. again, the show mm-hmm. kind of looks and focuses more on like the victims and like the impact that all that had on them. Um, okay. And the outside part, like uh, the first or either at the first episode or uh, like partway through the second episode, like in the beginning of the second episode, you know, cause this is one of the things I always think about, like with these horrific things, like, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer had a mother and a father and, you know, people had interactions with him all the time you know, that didn't know that he was this monster and his dad gets right. a phone call in the middle of the night. And so he goes to the police station cause they're like, there's been a murder and you know, we need to talk about your son, Jeffrey Dahmer or Je- Jeff Dahmer, whatever they said. And he shows uh-huh. up and he was expecting his son was murdered. And so the two detectives start basically telling them, you know, it's like, Hey, your son is arrested for attempted murder. And that's kind of like, well, what the fuck? And it's like, yeah. We also have some other stuff to tell you. You know, it's like there was a <laughs> Oh, se- by the way. Yeah, like there was a severed head in his fridge. We're pretty sure he was eating people. There's multiple people that we see that he's murdered. And like you think of that from like a father perspective or like just like he did a like they're like we're going to let you collect your thoughts and we'll come back and the guy who plays his dad like he sits there. I mean just imagine like if you were in that scenario, right? Oh my god, like yeah, like like trying to wrap your head around that. Like, I don't, I don't see how that's like, I, I, I really don't see how that's possible. Yeah. He like took a drink like I, of coffee. Like he almost like he was in self denial. And then he starts like fighting back, breaking down, like in tears. 
And you forget about people like that that are affected by this as well. I mean, obviously there's people who are more affected, like the victims and everything, but it's still just this big branching thing that I think you almost, like you said, people fetishize this stuff and kind of forget that there's real people that were affected by this. And I think that's what this show is doing a better than like some of the other things is it doesn't make this like, it's not a slasher horror movie. It's showing, it's showing the ripple effect is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Okay. Um, okay. There is a little bit like it does go into his childhood quite a, a decent amount. Um, I'm kind of not sure how I feel about how they're playing the mom. Cause they make her out to be kind of like, she's got a lot of like, mental instability she was on a lot of pills and stuff like that almost uh-huh. as kind of a i mean it's one of those things if you're watching you'd be like oh that could have been the reason but like his dad and and so everything that they're saying came from interviews and all that but him and his dad i guess would go and find roadkill together and dissect him when he was like 12 or 13 right which, yeah that i re- i remember at some point he like some point somebody said something about that, that he would like, like, yeah, mainly dead animals, you know, roadkill and stuff like that. Which seemed kind of like when that happened in there, I was like, that was that like, that's gotta be made up in this. Right. And it's like, no, him and his dad did that just as, cause his kid was, no, I remember him saying that at one point in an interview that was like a thing, which seems like that. I don't know. I get like, it's one of those things. Like it does. It's not weird it's just odd i think that you know like like in in you know it was in Dahmer's case because because this was like mid 90s so i think it was definitely around the time a lot you know that the people were very not concerned but people were very interested in finding out the why and the how when you like he was caught. In how like how yeah. did how did how did Jeffrey Dahmer go from A to B? A being, you know, like a kid with a with a you know with a seemingly normal life to I want to choke people and put heads in my freezer. Well, and like so, his time frame of stuff too. So he he murdered his first victim when he was like right out of high school. Mm -hmm. He waited nine years. Then I think he murdered another person. And that was kind of like an accident kind of thing. Uh But then like in the like 89 and 90, um, because there was a list of like the victims that he had murdered. Like it was like every month he was murdering somebody. Yeah. Like it wasn't like you think of some the serial killers where it's like three to six months or, you know, every year kind of thing. It was like a very common occurrence. Yeah. Uh, and he was apparently trying to make like zombie, like love zombies out of them. Um, yeah, that was, yeah, that was a thing. And so a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of hole drilling. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of drilling holes in, in heads. Which I am, like I said, I'm on episode four. And so far it hasn't been like, we haven't really gotten into like the bulk of the, like it's just starting to gradually show the victims. Like I said, it starts with the, the one that got away that got him arrested and that kind of starts mm-hmm. piece and other ones together. So it hasn't really gotten to that like really gruesome part, which I think it gets pretty gruesome from the stuff I've read and seen. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure that how that's going to go. Like that's the part I'm not really excited about. Um, <laughs> I like that you have to <laughs> you say that like just for the record, yeah. I am not excited about the whole the, the the head the head drilling and and the and the love zombie part like yeah. that's not that's not how this guy gets gets his kicks yeah and i just like th- this feels like so okay this is a good example so i don't know if you remember but in like the this would have been like 2002 2003 like the internet was kind of becoming a thing and there was a video going around of some reporter that got captured and had his head cut off. I don't know if you ever remember hearing about that or anything like maybe, but like through my school and this was like when internet security was like minimal, like nobody knew about like, you know, putting, you know, blocked websites and stuff on. Yeah. You could look Just at go anything to a geo cities page and off you go. Yeah. 
So like a bunch of the kids like heard about this and they're like, oh my gosh, we're going to go look at this on the computer. And like, I was like, man, like there's no way I want to look at that because, right. you know, that's that I don't want to watch somebody slowly being murdered. Like, do you remember, uh, when, when you were, when you were a kid and you'd go to the video store and you always saw those many, those, uh, faces, faces of, of death, death videos. Yeah. yeah. And you were like, Whoa, that looks, that's like real stuff. Whoa, my God, we should get it. We should totally get it. And you like convince your friends to rent one and then you watch it and it feels a little anticlimactic. Yeah, I think a lot of that was like reshot stuff too. Like, uh, I think there was one of like, wasn't there like a parachute who landed in like a gator pit? Something like that. But like, and, and at the end of the day, you're like, well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is just me, but like, like I'd sit there and I'd watch them. I like, you know, I think at one point like, I got convinced friends. I was like, we should totally rent one and watch it. I, I don't know. I don't remember how old we were. Probably like 13 or something like that. And we're like, oh, we should totally rent one. And so you get it, and then you watch it, and like halfway through it, you're like, this really isn't like interesting and fun. It's just kind of like, okay, yeah, that's- like you feel like you're why, like since you have no, since since you have no context, situational context of anything, it just it you know it just runs from like clip to clip to clip, yeah. Yeah, that's that's and one so that, you're not really invested in it, and so in a way, you kind of disconnect from it. Like it feels it feels no different than if you were watching a Saw movie. Yeah, so that's a great point. So like that video I was telling you about, like I think that's what a lot of the kids were thinking that they were just going to watch like some type of like horror movie scene or movie scene that wasn't real, but because mm-hmm. like it was real and it very much looked real, like one of the kids like. I was like, you didn't watch that, did you? He's like, yeah. It's like, I wish I hadn't, though. Because, yeah. like, it's something you see, and it just, like, it, you know, it's it's real. And kind of like I think when people think of, like, like you think of some of those Dahmer movies, they're very much like a slasher movie. It's a horror movie that yeah. is based on a true story. Whereas this, it really kind of more grounds it and says, no, this is kind of the stuff that happens, kind of a historical s- telling of this event. And, you know, I I hope that people watch this that go in like, oh, my God, I love true crime. I love hearing about, like, all the stuff that happens and yada, yada. Not, like, I don't even think that this is really – I mean, it's a crime. It is. But I don't really think of it as, like, a true crime genre because, to me, true crime genre yeah. is more of, like, you know – not this is, like, some a step above true crime, in my opinion. And I think it's one of those things that, like, when people see that, it almost gets – in their mind, how exploitive it can be. Um, mm-hmm. Cause that's the other thing with this show too, because it's been so long because all this stuff is public record, you know, the characters and stuff in here are real people and they can use all that stuff because it's public record. But like these sure. people almost have to relive a lot of that stuff. Um, there's a famous uh, scene from one of the victim's sister in the courtroom and they pretty much do that verbatim in the, in the show. And they talked to her mm-hmm. about it, and she was just kind of like, man, like, like it's been 20-some years, 30 years at this point, and I kind of have to relive all this stuff. And so, like, yeah. and when you see that and hear that, you're like, it just, again, it's not, it's something that happened 30 years ago, but those people are still alive. Those are people that are still going right. through all that trauma. Right. So the end of the day, it just, it's just one big super downer. That's That's what you're telling me. It's, it is. So this is what you're saying. This is, this is, this is the gist of what I'm getting is, is you're like, Richard, I watched the show and it's about Jeffrey Dahmer and it's one big poo poo downer fest. You should totally watch it. You know what? You know what show is a big fucking downer fest? I watched, uh, this is probably like a year or better ago. I watched that Chernobyl on HBO and again, like, th- like if you want to see the most depressing things you could see, like you watch that Chernobyl show because you're like, Hey, all this happened. And it's about this, you know, nuclear power plant that exploded. 
and the subsequent cover up of said ex- not of not of the explosion, but of the severity of yeah. how bad of how bad it was. And that and and, you know, like, hey, we got to have a bunch of soldiers go through towns and kill all the animals because they're infected the, because the <laughs> animals infected, are irradiated. But, yeah. And so you just like see soldiers going through and fucking shooting dogs. And you're like, this is a big, like this movie's a, this show's a goddamn downer. Yeah. I mean this, the Dahmer's not like for laughs. You're not like, I don't think I've laughed a single time in any of these episodes, Richard. And if I did, there's probably a problem. I need to talk to somebody, (laughs) but you know, again, like you look through, you watch this movie and there's, there's a show, uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo. There's a scene uh, I've mentioned it on this show, I think a bunch of times, or maybe it was on stranger thing, strange indeed. I mentioned it, but, and this show did the exact same thing where, you know, the, the, the one scene is like the guy gets into the dude's apartment, gets in Dahmer's apartment and instantly smells uh-huh. something's not right. Like he's like, it smells bad and he's yeah. getting a little uncomfortable, but it's almost like he's scared to offend Jeffrey Dahmer instead of just uh-huh. being like, I'm leaving. And there's a scene in the, the girl with the dragon tattoo where like the main character like goes into the, the basically the bad guy's house and kind of assumes and knows that he's a bad guy, like is murdering people and uh-huh. ends up getting like basically captured. And the guy's like, you were so worried about offending me that you risked your life. You could have got away. You could have walked out, but you were so scared to offend me and kind of the cultural, not cultural, like the, the so is that, thing. so is that the lesson? Is that the lesson? The lesson is if you walk into somebody's house and you, and you get the sense that they're a mass murderer, you should immediately hit them and leave. I'm uh, gonna do that when I walk in your house, Sean. I'm be like, hang on a minute. Well, I always something think- doesn't seem right. <laughs> Get away from me! Well, I always think it's like the buddy system. Like if like uh, there was uh, so there was one time that I probably shouldn't have done this, but I did for some reason. There was a guy that he came into Krieger's. The sports bar worked at, and he had like and a. He killed him and ate him. I killed him and ate him. No, he had a Mustang and I had a Mustang. No, he pulled up next to me and he let me drive his car to somewhere. We, he got gas. We came back to his house and like he ha- brought me inside. And like, I'm pretty sure like this dude could have been a serial killer. Okay. And so like it was like four or five in the morning. He's like, well, come on inside. But like I felt bad to offend him. What are you him. doing? No, exactly. Because I was a 19, 20 year old kid. Like, I didn't think anything of this. So I go in, and he's like, show me this. Like, uh, Richard, I haven't thought about this in a long time. Um, so he, uh, he had like this video of him racing his car, was showing me it. And like, there's like three or four times, like, well, I got to get going. He's like, well, let me show you this other video. And then after like the fifth one, he's like, wait, why don't you come to my bedroom? I want to show you this other video. I woke up six days later in a ditch. I don't know what happened. <laughs> no. It, I did get pretty creeped out though, but and to this day, I still pee funny, <laughs> but I mean, like I put myself in a very like vulnerable, scary situation that God, I didn't like, that's bringing it. Like, I think I blocked that memory away. Yeah. You know why? Cause you didn't want to get, cause, cause you're, you blocked it out. Cause you're like, I could have been murdered there, 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 yeah. there and there. But I did keep myself between him and the door. Like I, I was smart enough to think about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a weird, like, brain nugget that I didn't realize was still there. I can't really think of an instance where I feel like I have put, you know, like, intention, not intentionally, but unintentionally. I can't think of a situation where I've unintentionally put myself in danger. Where I, where I have a moment where I stop and I'm like, I'm in danger. Like, I don't think, I can't think of it. I bet if you thought back, and maybe like you, maybe I've blocked, maybe I've blocked those those times out as well. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I bet if like there, like he didn't grab a knife, or like it wasn't like I didn't actually get like in danger, but like it very much could have been. And I bet if like you thought back on situations, there probably is one where like, oh yeah, I did go there when I was like kind of intoxicated, or I, oh yeah, I did go like I didn't know this person; I was by myself. Yeah, like where you're like, oh, things could have gone from zero to a hundred. 
awful quick. Yeah, because again, like, and that's what this show. So the other thing I want to talk about on this show, or I guess this whole situation is, you know, like when you what, like that guy when I went to his house, or like these guys went to Jeffrey Dahmer's house. The very last thing on their mind is like, oh, this is a cannibal serial killer. It's going to murder me. Right, right. Like that's not instantly where your brain goes. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. Because the there's a few things that they show. Because I can't tell you how many times I've walked into a house and I'm like, wait a minute. Mm. Immediately run to the freezer and open it up. Be like, all right, Amanda, what are you eating? Bone broth. You're all right for now, <laughs> but I'm watching you, buddy. But they talked a bunch, like, and I I thought they were really gonna hammer on this point, but they didn't. They they mention it, but it's not like they're not like, oh, well, this is the reason he got away. But like he was a guy who had quite a few different run-ins with the law. Um, like his first victim, he got pulled over, I guess, because he was drunk driving, or was intoxicated while he was driving. And yeah, and uh, you know, again in that situation, like when the cops pull him over and he's got bag like trash bags in the back, like their thoughts aren't like, oh, I bet there's a dead body back there. You know, right? They pull over a 19 year old kid. You know, it's the seventies where like drunk driving really wasn't like a thing where they hammered people for. Yeah, it's yeah. There there wasn't a there wasn't a uh there wasn't a mad a mad group. Yeah, I mean like I'm like I I've heard stories from like my family where it's like, Oh yeah, I was like really shit faced and the officer drove me home or followed me home. <laughs> you know Yeah. So if there's a nineteen year old kid who's like slightly buzzed like you tell, he's like he's not like drunk, drunk. He's just been drinking a little bit. You know, the cop's not going to be like, "Oh, we're going to throw you in the slammer because you know, buzz driving is drunk driving," and they're not going to be like, "Oh, and I bet you have dead bodies, so I'm going to arrest you." And you know, you know what you should do now is you should find a a a make believe severed head, and you should just put it in your freezer and just have it there all the time. So that way, if you like invite somebody over and they're just like hanging out and all of a sudden they're like, Hey, I'm a go to the bathroom and they sneak into your kitchen and open up the freezer and find a severed head. That's not a bad idea. Cause you could be like, Hey, why don't you get some ice cream? I'm in the bathroom and you set it up. So when they open the freezer, it falls out like, yeah. Dunk. What's this? Oh, that's Bob. And you like, like having it, like putting a head in your freezer, like that's just something like it's a freezer, so like it'll keep. I'm not saying put. I'm not saying find an actual. Oh, that's head what I thought you were insinuating. In like, no, get a real head. No. no, I'm not saying find a real head. I'm just saying like you could put a a a a, a fake severed head in your freezer, just so you always have that. You always have that joke, like on, on standby. I feel like ready that's, to go. That, I feel like that's a good and way. You, to- you you know what? Like like that thing could come up and. You could totally, you could totally forget about it, and then like a year down the road or two years down the road, and you have a friend over, and they open up your freezer, <laughs> and there's a head in it. Oh, I forgot about that thing. It's like giving yourself a Christmas present. I feel like though that's like if you want to like um, emotionally scar your children <laughs> at a young age, that'd be one way to do it. They go to school. See, Daddy's looks- always got his head in the freezer. That's a that's a good idea. That's something I should do. Yeah, that'd be a good Halloween prank. That's like a, a Roseanne old school Halloween prank. That's just some. I feel like I feel like that's that's a prank you could do all year long. And again, like I said, you know, it's the freezer, so you could just set it in there and just let it cook. Just it's, let that. Just let that. Let that. Uh, that landmine sit, and yeah. then somebody just steps on it. And then you have a good laugh. And it's like I said, it's like giving yourself a Christmas present. Yeah. I mean, you could just get like a rubber ball and put like a mask on it and wrap it with some kind of like foil, not foil, but like a saran wrap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I was going to go some right head on it and magic. Marker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I going to go with next on that? I'm really kind of thrown off by the, my uh, memory nugget. Like I really forgot about that till just now. What happened? What happened to the person? Did you stay in contact with the person? No, because this was way before cell phones and stuff. Um, I think he said he was going to come. Like, like he'd be like, "Oh, I'll come to the restaurant at some point again and say, hey. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because it was like late at night. And I took uh one of the 
um, we had, I don't remember her name was, but we had an older um, busser and she didn't have a vehicle uh-huh. or anything. So I drove her home. And then on the way, the guy saw my Mustang and kind of flagged me down. And then we talked. He's like, hey, you can drive mine if you want. What are the odds? What are the odds that they were a killer, that they were a serial killer? Uh, I mean, like, 12%. Like, give, me a, give me a percentage chance. 12%. That you would get murdered that night. Uh, murdered that night. I mean, since I wasn't, I'm pretty sure it was low. But like since then, I'd say like 12%. Like he was probably a serial killer. So I think he was living with his mom. He was probably like early, like mid to late twenties. I bet mom was in the freezer. Maybe, yeah. He, I did ask if I could have a beer, and he's like, "Don't open that freezer." I'm like, who keeps beer in the freezer? <laughs> I was gonna open the fridge. He's like, "Okay, there's just that's where I keep the special beer." <laughs> um, and by special beer, I mean severed heads. <laughs> yeah, so I talked about his dad a little bit, like that scene. Um. What else is there to talk about about this show? Again, it, it feels very like I don't I, I wouldn't say you need to. Watch Are you this. going to finish the show? Yeah, I'll finish it. Um, so you're not turned off by anything that you've seen thus far? No, it definitely. I mean, it's uneasy watching. Um, it feels like kind of watching like again, like I feel like you watch this and kind of get an idea of not really what made him what he is or but signs to watch out for. Um, uh, uh-huh. I mean, you say human, like they're not humanizing him in a way that makes him sympathetic. Um, but I do like the fact that with it being very grounded, it's not this like mythical folklore type thing, which I feel like serial killers in the mid nineties and late nineties kind of were almost folklore, like mythical, like not really heroes, but like anti-heroes to an extent. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And I don't think this show, I don't feel like it does that. Like it definitely, like I said, they, they made a very good choice in saying like, here's the first episode showing the guy getting away. And we've established that this is a monster. And so Mm -hmm. along the way, you're always reminded of that. Like, this is a horrible person who did horrible things. So anything along the way you see, that's like, Oh, I feel bad for him about this. It's like, yeah, I feel bad for, you know, 14 year old Jeffrey. But that doesn't yeah. change the fact that 22-year-old Jeffrey was a monster. No, no, it doesn't. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that that's, that that's kind of like established. Okay. So, so better question. At this point, would you recommend the show to other people? Would you, are you, are you recommending the show to me? You know, it's what's- not, not necessarily whether says whether or not I will watch it. I guess I'm just asking, would you recommend it to me? So it's kind of like, this is one of those shows, like this stuff always like, it feels like treading lightly to be like, Hey, you should watch this show about this real life serial killer. So you feel like you have to like, you know, know a person in terms of like their tastes and preferences. Yeah. Like I wouldn't like suggest this is like, oh my gosh, like this is such a like good show. You should watch mom, it. Mom, you should totally check this yeah. out. Like I, Tiffany would not watch this show at all. And like, I wouldn't suggest this to like my in-laws and they, they enjoy watching, like they enjoy entertaining shows and they like suspenseful stuff. But like, uh-huh. this is more of like, if because everybody knows who Jeffrey Dahmer is. And it's like, if you kind of want to understand what happened a little bit better, then, uh-huh. then I would watch it. Um, and if you go in with the idea that this is a little exploitive, not in terms of like, it's not glorified exploitation, but it's, it is exploitive of the victims and everything. You know, you're almost kind of, I feel, well, yeah, I mean, it, just, I feel like just talking about it in general, can be exploitive. Yeah. But again, the, what I feel you get out of watching this is it, it brings you back to realizing that this is a real thing and real people that were affected. Right. Um, I remember. So the other, so like I talked about the, the video of the guy who got beheaded and like, everybody's kind of like, Oh my God, this will be cool to see. Wouldn't it be funny? Like, ha ha ha. It's like, Oh, I won't lose my head. And then you watch it and you're like, Oh shit. Like that was, that was way more than I was expecting. <laughs> um, right. The other thing, it's not as bad, but I remember my freshman year in college, um, that we went into the sim- this, like, uh, this guy was doing like some kind of like, um, uh, speech or whatever you call those things. 
And everybody walks in, they're kind of joking because nobody really wanted to be there. You know, it's like one of those assembly hall okay. things. And, you know, they're making jokes, yada, yada, yada. And the guy gets up there and, like, he calls that out. He's like, hey, I just want to let you know, like, I have a very serious thing to talk about. I heard you guys all making jokes and everything. Like, you know, if you don't want to hear this story, go ahead and leave now. But, like, like it was like somebody, like, seeing, like, you seeing past. I'm going to talk about murder. Yeah, well, it was, uh, so the guy, uh, like, went to Mexico, I think, for, like, a trip. And on the last uh-huh. night, he drove. So they all wanted to party the last night. So he was the least sober. And they got into a car accident. Like, I think he ended up killing, like, everybody in the car or a couple people in the car. And ended up going to jail Oof. for, like, 15 years for murder. And because it okay. was a felony murder, he went to, like, big boy jail. And <sighs> he was like, you know, everything that you hear about in jail, like, not all of it's true, but a lot of it's true. And you're like, oh, man. So you got scared straight? Is that what happened? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, but- Did you need to be scared straight, Sean? I feel like I feel like it was just, I feel like it was kind of a like, uh, like, hey, you're preaching to the scared to the straight choir here. Like, yeah, I mean, like your freshman year in college, you feel a little rebellious. You know, um, and they just nip that in the butt right did. away. Yeah, I remember the other time, like I, I didn't get. A They're chance. like, listen, I, I struggle with an assignment, and like uh, the teacher, you know, when I walked in, he's like, "Hey, Sean, you know, you had, you didn't turn this thing in," and I was kind of like, "Well, I'm in college," and I was like, "Yeah, I, I you know, I struggle with it, um, so I, I just wasn't going to turn it in." He's like, "Oh no, you're going to turn it in. I'll just give you a couple more days," and I was like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll work on it. I'll get it turned in." Any rebellion. Ever the apple polisher. Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, you say it's kind of square, but, you know, got me this far in life <laughs> without any heads in my freezer, so. All right. But, I, yeah. So, I guess, like. You're saying I, sh- you're, you're saying I should watch it, yes? Uh, I would try to watch the first two episodes. <clears throat> okay. Now, because you've, re- you wrote that paper back in college. Right. I think you have some knowledge of like the whole thing that happened. Um, so it may be something that you watch like the first two or three episodes, like, okay, like this all collaborates with everything I remember researching back in the day. I don't need to see any more. Um Right. And you're also not a person that like glorifies a lot of that stuff either. So I again if you're somebody that's like, Oh my god, I love true crime serial killers, they rock, and you watch this and you're like, Oh, yeah, I feel like if if I was if I was into that stuff, then like the roles would be reversed. Like I would be telling you about this show. Yeah, and I'm not a true crime person either. Um, I like I said, I remember in the mid '90s, like they made so many of these documentaries about serial killers, and my mom was pretty like my mom was like true crime podcast fan before true crime podcasts existed. <laughs> so I saw a lot of these things and knew of a lot of these names growing up, and. You know, as when you see these as a kid, it's on TV. It feels very fake, very like folklorish, and this again just kind of like very much like brings it to life in more of a like, like for me. Unsolved mysteries is as far as is is honestly like as much as I dip my toe in the water when it comes to uh, true crime stuff. Yeah, but those had like Bigfoots and UFOs in it and stuff too. That's why I would see see you get me. Yeah. You get me. Because that's because like I like just give me a little dollop and then it's you know what it is it's you know what unsolved mysteries it, it puts a true crime pill in my cryptozoology yeah it puts a true crime true true crime medicine inside my cryptozoology ham sandwich because they'll do ghosts they'll go to like civil war ghosts I guess like doesn't Netflix have like unsolved mysteries back on. Yeah, they brought it back for a little bit. Any good or I've never even watched it. Um it's not bad. It's not it doesn't it doesn't feel it you know, like it doesn't feel like the old the old one. I'll tell you what, the old one was really big on the on the on the whole like cult killings and stuff like that. Yeah. Like that came so out it's like in, the 90s. I guess it's interesting to watch older episodes where like all these like where well, apparently there's like cults running around all across the country fucking killing people. Well, I mean, and there then were, you find out that it's all bullshit. Well, there were a couple of big high profile ones in that time frame. 
Like there was the ones that watched the comment that all drank Kool Aid. No, they didn't drink Kool Aid. Yeah, they drank Kool Aid, didn't they? No, I just mean like like you watch like episodes from like the you watch episodes from the early '90s that are talking about stuff that apparent uh, apparently happened in like the '80s about like oh, yeah. you know crazy cults that are running across and they're you know they're going cross country and they're murdering people, they're murdering people in their homes, and you're like and and then, and, and so. Having the perspective now where you realize that, like, all that was BS. Oh, yeah. And so then you go back and you watch it and you see how, like, how everybody is, like, so convinced that that's what it, it is. That's what probably happened. Yeah. I mean, there was such a slow news cycle that, like, that stuff would just marinate forever. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's kind of, it's honestly, it's a bit of a, it's a little bit of a social experiment to watch, but yeah, yeah I see it. But yeah, again, I, I'd say you, you kind of watch it like side eyed where you're just kind of like, I don't feel like I should be watching this, but uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a big historical thing that happened. Um, yeah. I, I think it kind of helps make you not have the like urban legend feel of it and kind of get the better understanding of it, which you may or may not want. I don't know. Um, At this point, after, after listening to you, I'll give it a hard maybe. Yeah. And again, if I do, if I do watch it, I will let you know. Okay. I'll let everybody know. And they do, like I said, like the one thing about these things too, that like you bring the victims names up and bring them more to light, which Mm -hmm. I think is good because you don't, you don't, fetishize the killer you remember the names of the victims yeah and i always feel like we get so like everybody knows the names but nobody really knows to understand or care about the victim sometimes and i feel like this show is trying to bring that stuff to light a little bit more but okay yeah it's like the okay. first couple episodes give it a shot and it may not be in your wheelhouse you may not like it um I, I'm not saying this is something you should see, but um, definitely worth trying. But uh, with all that, uh, like I said, this was going to be such an upbeat episode. What about some Richard's closing thoughts? Um, the lesson that you should take away from this is um, don't drive someone else's Mustang because you could be murdered in their house at four o'clock in the morning and hmm. no, let's leave it there. Yeah. I think that's a good, we'll just, we'll just PS <laughs> just a little PSA. All right. Let me, Love more, you know, let me do a little bit of housekeeping. Visit our website. We're at language.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at language bro. Emails at bros at language com. And if you want to join our patrons, you can join us just like Wendy and Aaron. They're totally safe. We promise. Hey, Aaron, go get me a beer out of the freezer. Who gives beer out of the thunk? (laughs) Oh, he got me. All right. Ah, 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 ah. (laughs) Is there anything else before I close her out? The gift that keeps on giving. (laughs) All right. Well, that's all the bromance we have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And remember, don't be a Y. Be a Y. Be a Y not. Unless you want to do this, in which case, no, don't. Yeah. That's no. Don't do this. Do other things. Put a put a put a plastic head in your freezer. Not a real one. I mean, unless you have access to a real one. <laughs> in which case, don't do that. And why do you have an access to a real one?